Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here again, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And here we are now with part 24 of the uh, Sherman build. And as you can see, I've got the hull here. I've gone on, I put Mr. Surfacer in this joint. I've sanded it all down, got it all nice and smooth. And I've drilled these holes, cut the slots and sanded everything down so it's nice and smooth. So I've been doing a bit off camera um, rather than have you watch me drilling and sanding and drilling and sanding. You don't need to see that. Um, these are a little bit wavy, they're not very flat, so I'm not worried about it because they wouldn't have been very flat in real life. This across the back, I'm not sure, maybe some, a, a Sherman expert can help me. I'm looking on references and I'm seeing some have this and some don't. Now it's not like it looks like some have had them and they've been pulled off. It looks like some were never built with them and some have them and they're bolted on, which would mean I need to add a flange here and bolt them on. So if any, any Sherman experts out there could please let me know. I'd also like to know, what is this? Is this an M4A3, an M4A4 or A1 or what is it? Because I know it's got the radial engine in it, so it's a shorter back end, but I'm not much of a Sherman expert, so I know there are people out there that would just love to tell me and would probably put a message underneath this video that's about 600 lines long, because there's a lot to learn about Shermans um, and all the different variants. I love them, they're one of my favourite tanks, but um, I don't know much about the variants and stuff. Anyway, uh, enough waffling. Right, so done all that. Next thing I've done, I've taken the lights, as you remember, I assembled them in an earlier video, and I've painted the inside of them silver. As you know, these have got um, working lights with uh, with fiber optics. In the instructions, it tells you to add these light units. They're small bulbs. But then there's an addendum sheet in the manual, which is here. It was here, there it is. And this is going on about the, the different light systems fitted in the kit. And basically you've got this sheet here, which is covering the Sherman, um, and you've got this here. So instead of having what you've got in the kit, which is basically wires with lights on them, what you've got is fiber optics going into a light unit with an LED. So um, you can see on here that basically there's those two little light units. So you've got one LED front, one LED rear, and then you've got your five fiber optics feeding off of there. So they're carrying the light up. So that's a, a better solution. Although saying that I had a nightmare with my um, leopard because the fiber optics were very, very hard. And I, I, I still haven't found any softer ones. So I've got to, um, you've got to follow this part of the instructions rather than, rather than this part of the instructions here. So we'll be doing that. Um, shortly. Um, we've also got the rear light lenses to paint. So you've got one side, the left has got the the red lens there and then you've got the blackout lights underneath. And then this one here has got the white triangle on the top and the blackout lights below. So I've actually done this and what I'm going to do is show you how to do it because what you've got, if I show you close up, if you can be able to make this out, but what you've got is in the clear plastic there are some indentations. Now you can see I've done done this one on the red but I haven't done this one on the red and you can see what I've done is just roughly painted over the indentations so now what I need to do is remove that red excess red paint so we end up with the red stripes let's get a piece of paper so you can see it through there as you can see the one at the bottom has got the red stripes clearly marked out and the one on the top hasn't so what I'm going to do is take these cotton swabs. Now these are made by, you see I use this, I advertise this company here, Anise, it's not N-E-Z or N-E-Z, it's Anise is the way it's pronounced. Um, he makes a various little range of um, cables and spark plugs and oil fittings and all sorts of stuff for detailing models and um, decals and cockpit decals, they're, they're immense. If you look back on my videos, you'll see I reviewed all of his products that he sent me. Um, great guy, his name's Tom, he's also a modeler, he's got his, his own website. Uh, it's here www.anise.io and you'll see on there that he's actually he's a modeler himself and he builds some beautiful models and uh, he, he has them all on his website. So these little tiny cotton swabs, you can get the same thing or a similar thing from Tamiya. I, I don't know, I seem to find these less fluffy. Um, I prefer using these to the to the Tamiya ones um, and there's, there's, the, there's the two types there. Um, and also, I think these shafts are a little bit more rigid. I don't know. I, I could be imagining they could be exactly the same thing, but I, I think these are better. I prefer them to the Tamiya ones. So what I'm going to do is take some IPA, which I've got in a bottle here. These old um, thinner bottles for your Mr. Surface, uh, Mr. Th Mr. Leveling thinners. They're um, really handy to keep. In fact, I've got one here. I'll show you this. This is a Mr. Color 
one tenth in the bolt ball and you can see it's got grey paint in it and that is basically about 10 or 12 jars of Tamiya XF63 German grey <laughs> nah. so when I've ready to paint these in German grey I just pour it in and, and use it it's, it's pretty thin so you don't have to bother about mixing up when you're doing German grey so um, I've got that now so that's dampened so what I can do if I bring up close to the camera perhaps put some white in the background make it easier for you to see put it close to the camera what I'm going to do is just gently wipe over I'm on the wrong side G gently wipe over where I put the red paint and you'll see the red paint comes off on the swab and the reason these are so good rather than using a normal cotton swab is because they're hard so they will only remove the red paint from the upper surface they won't remove it from down in the dip and they're not all hairy and fluffy so they won't leave bits of fluff all stuck to your model so there you go you get the idea I'm just rubbing over that gently and the excess red paint, that's X27 I've painted on there, which is a transparent or translucent um, translucent red paint from Tamiya. So we just rub that over there like that and you can see that it gets rid of the, the excess paint and we end up with, with a neat, neat area of stripes you can see there. Okay, so I'll carry on and finish that off. I've also got to do this white one on the top here. There's, there's some excess white paint on there, so I'll just remove that. As you can see, it's got a lovely sharp point as well to get into the corners. Whoops, I'm off camera. Trying to do funny stuff like this on camera is um, it's very, very difficult. There you go. You can see now that, that upper light there. We've got the neatly formed triangle on the top and the red lights at the bottom. So I'll get this finished now and then I'll come back. Right, now this has been about two seconds for you. It's about three days for me. I've done this about three times now and got it wrong and I've soaked it in alcohol and, and stripped it and then painted it again. So I don't know if you can see this when I go close up. But basically what you've got is the red pattern with the black background. So what I've done, you can see on the back. What I ended up doing was ended up painting the black and then adding the red afterwards. I put the white on first, um, then added the black and then put the red after. And that way you can see that you've got the red coming through. And when we get a light behind it, it should look, uh, it should look pretty good. So I did try it with black felt pen and of course it wasn't, um, it wasn't opaque enough. So basically the, the light just shined through it. So that's a good couple of coats. And what I've used there is a Viejo um, black paint. Uh, because it sort of flows easily and it dries really fast so you can put about three coats on one straight after the other without waiting for things to really dry so it gives you that sort of nice solid black look but I mean they're going to go in behind lenses anyway so we'll, we'll see how it looks but um, yeah so my advice to you to do that forget what I said before paint the black on first leave all the the bits that are going to be red well paint the white first then paint the black and then Make sure you keep all the bits that are going to be red clear and then just put the red on afterwards. And I've put about three coats of the red on there to get some depth, otherwise it looks a bit pink. So um, lots and lots of work gone into those two stupid little light lenses. So as we say before, we look at the kit and it's telling us to use these bulbs. But then the update sheet is telling us to use these LEDs and this, um, sorry, not LED, well it is LEDs and uh, fibre optics and this uh, black tubing here. So we've got to cut these to length. So when we look in here, you can see when we come over the page, it's telling us here. So you've got, I've explained this before, but in case you haven't seen, you've got this additional set of instructions in the kit and it covers here the M4 Sherman. This one is the um, Pershing and this one is the KV-1. Okay, so we'll probably have this again when we come to build the Pershing. But, um, Basically what it's doing is telling us rather than putting these these um, lights in, which I assume will be brought up later in the instructions. No, they're just going to sit in the hole. So they're telling you to put these lights in. Surely there's a mention on where they go. Okay, never mind. But here that the dude is showing you where the the um, 
the fiber optics are going to go and you tape it down and they're going to go into these little light units which are in here so you've got this bag of stuff here so um basically now i've got a cut for the front um so this is the headlights so i need two times 100 millimeters of the um of the fiber optic and then on the rear is 110 times three so I need to cut those to length so i'm going to use my little fiber optic cutter so um great little tool this it gets a nice square end on the fiber optics and sort of prevents any distortion so you get a nice and if you can see on there you get a nice square cut on the end okay and then if i hold this on the lamp you'll see that you can see that actually if i move the light come on focus camera You can see there how, how, how clear it becomes if I hold it in the light and then out of the light. So uh, there we go. So I've got to cut these to length. You don't need to see me do that. So I'll get these cut to length and then we'll look at gluing them in. Okay, straight away we've got a problem. Um, and this isn't a problem caused by me. It's telling us here we need 2 times 100 on the front and 3 times 110 for the back. So 3 times 110 is 330. Um, and then 200 so that makes it 530 so we look I'm just before I started cutting I checked the length and I've got 420 and you can see I've barely well I haven't got enough so basically if I cut these 200s I want enough to make 310s so I'm just looking now at what we can do now if we look at the front here it's telling us to cut two times 100 and back here it's three times 110 so I don't have these holes made at the moment but it's roughly going to go in there roughly it's actually going to come through this hole here which I haven't drilled yet but if we look here we can see that what they're telling us to do is attach our light unit there so it's going to have to come out through here so that's going to have to be there say so that is actually 110 long so we need our 310s for the back now the front I've already checked this we can get away with slightly less so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my three 110s and then I should have I'll just what's left I'll cut in half and that will be long enough for the fronts and if it's not I'm going to have to dig out the fiber optic from the leopard kit and use that so there's 110 there just take away about three mil for the, for the width of the cutter and then chop it off and for some reason that's not cutting through it there we go oops so i'll go on and do the rest of these you can see how easy that is to cut off and then uh, we'll go from there okay so there we go they're all glued in now um, these rear lights they tell you in the instructions to put this black vinyl tubing over it's a joke um, th this is not at all like Tamiya this is like some kind of I don't know um, trumpeter hobby boss add-on thing you know when they've decided to add LEDs or something to the kit much like the um, Titanic and it just it's, it's it's almost like it's not meant for it um, these things squeeze in the back of these and when you put that black tube in on it just squeezes it all back out again so I think what I'll do is not bother with the black tube in I think I'll just put a thick layer of black paint around them if, if they need to be black I don't know what it's on there for to be honest but um, they don't have them on the headlights so I don't really know what it's there for but basically we can see if I take this rear light here get the camera to focus you can see there I can turn the lights on and off with my finger I put the finger over the end of the fiber optics you can see them in there so that's worked quite well same for the headlights um, I've used five minute epoxy to glue them in but my five minute epoxy is getting on now so um, I've watched it. it takes quite a while to go off but you can see here you can see the bulb on and off there there you go if it would bloody focus come on there you go so um what we're going to do we're going to put these to one side oh, my chromometer in the way there put these to one side and let them uh, dry off 
for a good few hours let it go absolutely solid and then we'll do some painting I want to just um, in these headlights here again if we can get into focus you can see that at the bottom you can see through there's a clear area there and um, come on there's a clear area there in the bottom and I want to make sure I paint that silver because otherwise when it's painted green you'll see a, a big green blotch in the bottom of the headlight so just being fussy really so um, <clears throat> let's start doing some work on this hull again I wanted to do the lights basically because you're probably fed up with seeing me do all this after effects stuff on the hull so I'll do the lights and then we're going to replace these handles we've got two of these two handles here which as you can see are just molded as lumps so I'm going to basically cut those off with a pair of nice sharp Tamiya cutters There we go, and now we've got those there marked, so I can come in the end of here, just push down with a with a pointy stick, like so, and mark where the ends of those are. That one went a bit off centre, so we'll do that one again. There we go. So that's them marked, and then I'm going to come in with a. 1.2 millimeter drill just start and make sure it's on center yes it is just drill through go all the way through I don't really like using power tools for drilling I tend to do most of my drilling by hand gone a little bit wayward but not to worry this is so thick this plastic yeah, the drill moved in the in the drill rather than the rather than go through okay so we'll drill this one here and we'll just try and get it to go off a touch there we go it's gone off to the right a touch that's what we want to line up with the other one Although I'm sure it wouldn't really matter. I, I doubt if they were perfectly square when they were welded on. It was probably weld them together and get them out. Okay, so that's that drilled through. Then I'm going to take a nice sharp blade and just shave off this area here. Oops. Again, one of the beauties of um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a skinny stick here so that I don't sand more than I need to. As you know, I would normally use my Infini stuff these days. Okay, so that's those drilled through and then we can just take our brass handle. And just fit it in like so, he says. Made the fit there what you should always do with these is cut one leg longer than the other not by too much just like that and it just makes them a lot easier to fit because what you can do is put one leg in to do some more sanding there you can put one leg in keep it square and then um, put the other leg in after like this so that legs in there now I can push it back Keep it square and put that one in, he says. Of course, dealing with this 1.2 brass, it's obviously a lot tougher than the... Um, just going to close that up just a touch. It's obviously a lot tougher than the 0.5 or 0.8 that we would normally use on our 35th scale stuff. Come on. Because the camera's on again, isn't it? That's what it is. Let's try the other way round. I don't believe this. I don't believe how difficult this is becoming. Of course, the other issue is what I've done wrong here is I've used a 1.2 drill 
for 1.2 brass. And what I should have done was used a 1.3 because we need some to get some glue around it anyway. So I'm going to come in. I should be able to just do this. Without using a chuck because you've got such a small amount of plastic coming out. There we go. This should go in easy now. Right, after all that messing about, I finally got them in. Um, so difficult because it's so thick it doesn't flex. But they're in. I'm not going to glue them yet because I need to do some research and I need to find out if this is actually um, going to be the same as this. I've got a feeling this is a flat steel plate, so I've got a feeling this would have been the same as this, so I need to do some texturing on there and the same on here. I believe there probably should be a weld here and here, so I'm going to do some research on that. Um, <clears throat> somebody did reply in my comments and say that there's a load of welds missing or something, so I need to look into that as well. Um, or they're not very prominent, they need enhancing. Um, I think also we need to add some wireframes on here. But I'm certainly not going to glue these handles in until we're... Um, until we're you know, dead sure of how this finish on here should be. And it looks like this panel here is bolted on as well. Um, and that flange looks like it's welded on. So that's probably going to get this hot rolled steel effect as well. So we'll have to look into all that before we start adding any detail. So looking in the instruction manual, um, obviously I don't want to be adding any of this yet because we've got the cast engine cover there to do. I'm not going to be adding any of that yet if I'm going to be working around here. Um, and then there's talking about us going on with the with the turret and starting to work on the turret. Now, what they're saying here is to put the, um, the turret ring assembly together, blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to fit all this together before you actually glue. Before you actually glue it all together. What I do want to do is get this barrel glued together because... Um, Basically, um, if you watch my channel, you'll know that what I always say is look ahead in your instructions. If you're building, say, a truck kit and you've got two, you know, cylindrical fuel tanks on the sides, glue them together first, clamp them up when they're dry, put them in the box, leave them. And then when you come to need them, it's just a case of sanding them and the joints won't all shrink back. Um, and as modelers, we all know that what happens when you start to... Um, when you start to do like fuselage halves and stuff like that, you put the glue on, okay? You clamp it all together, you leave it overnight to dry, you come along, you might put some Mr. Surfacer in there or some sprue glue, whatever. You sand it all, you get it all lovely and smooth and that's it, and you paint it. And then after a week, you look at the model and it's got a line come back where all the, the solvents have all dried out of all your glues and everything and, and the, the, the joint has actually shrunk back. So the same thing would happen here with this, um, with this gun barrel. So let me get the points, let me get the, the, <clears throat> the parts out and we'll get that glue together. Okay, so it's telling us to uh, fit these reflective stickers which are here in with the decals. Um, I don't want to do that because if I put that in there now, that means I can't go in and clean the inside of the barrel up and stuff and get a nice cylindrical look to it. So, because it doesn't actually have a muzzle, does it, this tank? No, it's just a straight, straight barrel. So um, I'm tempted to kind of leave those out for now and then try and think of a way of getting them in afterwards. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a way. If not, we could just paint inside there with some silver paint. It doesn't need to be highly reflective. It's just to enhance the look of the um, the, the the flash when you fire the, the main gun. So um, I'm going to take a, a 150 Infini stick here and I'm just going to sand over this just to make sure there's no undulations or bits that aren't flat. Do the same here. Just like so. There we are. Now that there is gonna that ejector pin mark there is gonna interfere when we come to put that reflective strip in. So I'm just gonna cut that away or scrape it away or Get rid of it somehow. There we go, so that's that scraped away. So I should be able to get in there again with a skinny stick.
there we go just like that so put these two together just check the fit and it is superb so we'll get all this mess out of the way i'm going to come along with my new glue here and what i'm going to do because these edges are quite wide i'm just going to prime them just to get the plastic going before we try and do the uh, the normal capillary action bit there we go so now I can come along just apply glue down there like so and then do the same on the other side and that should all capillary into that joint Put plenty on there and we can give it all a squeeze make sure we're circular what you don't want to do is end up with that you want to make sure that both ends are are nicely glued together just like so and I think what I'm going to do is come along with a paintbrush this is one I use for my um, Mr. Surfacer and I'm just going to brush some glue down the inside just to make sure because this is so thick this plastic the glue's got a lot of work to do to capillary into such a thick joint there we go so we give that a good squeeze we can see we've got glue oozing out so that's a good sign and it, it, we know the joint is going to be solid then we don't want it to be um, splitting open or cracking or whatever down the road so there we go so that's that together so we can just put that on one side and wait for it to go off now let's look at what else we can do right so looking here what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to glue we'll, we'll screw all this together we're not going to glue on to screw onto the turret base yet but um we'll do all this and then we'll call it a day for this one i think um so basically we've got to look at this turret ring assembly and you've got the gun elevation unit which is here so we've got that in that bag so we'll get that bag open save that staple in the bin and save this bag for putting if anybody wants to buy any hellcat dummy fuel tanks that's a packaging bag there perfect size and then what we've got to do here is we've got to get these parts out now if you remember going back a long time ago we did our um, abc here in our premium hobbies glue holder but now we can see parts coming up mk and i've looked in the back and basically what that's telling us here is if you look in the back come on again we've got a list of parts and everything and we've got a machine gun bag here which is mk and all the parts in there are mk so there's our machine gun bag there's the machine gun barrel and everything in there so what we need is mk8 so we can do is open this one up now and what i'm going to do i'm going to put these parts in with parts a okay because there's no screws or anything in there it's all just clips and stuff so what i'll do is i'll get out the parts i need where are my tweezers there they are so i want one of those little c clips so i can get my tweezers in there i get one of those there's a little c clip i want one of those ball joints which is there that one out and then everything else is a and b so what i'm going to do 
I'm going to pour these parts in with the A parts. I've got it on video so we can remember which one we're actually mixing them up with. And then we've got MA3 times 2. So MA3 times 2. We're not going to be, yes we are. I didn't think we were going to be using those. So MA3 is there. So that's those two. And then you've got MB4 times 2, which we're going to use here. So MB4 is that one, I believe. Yep. So MB4 times 2. And then we've got these two here, which I'm not going to use because we're not going to fit the lower turret on here yet. So um, what we'll do is we'll put that to one side. So we've got all our bits there. So we need to get our turret mechanism we got here, or gun elevation unit, which is here, which is a motor and a little set of gears. And then I need to get this part here, H3. And H3 happens to be in this bag with the turret ring. So we can um, get that one open, get rid of the staples. And our H screw is in there. So what we need here is we need H3, which is this little part here. So we'll cut that one off like so. And then we'll get a 400 grit sanding stick and just take away any rough edges on it. Don't really need to because it's not going to be visible but it's uh, it's good practice to do so so this is going to go on that way up like that and that ball there mk8 is going to screw into the top of it so i'm going to grab my wrench that's going to fit into the side of it there and then we can push that little lug on the top is sticking up we can push that into there and then screw it in just like that. And when it stops, just stop. Don't go grunge it up or anything because you'll split the plastic open or strip the thread. So on here it's telling us the instructions here to remove this little black piece here. And we're going to fit the that part on with its flat. like so and then I'm going to take this little clip I'm going to slide that in there Oops. it's going to be easier said than done so you take that little clip and then with our tweezers, we should be able to just squeeze, squeeze it on and flick it across the room. So uh, I'll go and find that and I'll come back. Okay, the carbon monster got that one. But very, very lucky for me, I noticed there were two in the bag. So I went back to my instructions, looked at the machine gun bag, and it said one MK4. And there were two in the bag, so we got a spare one. So thanks, Tamia. That'd be a great favour there. So, um, <clears throat> got that on. Um, honestly, that is one of the hardest secrets I've ever fitted. It was really, really tight. Even fitting it across the flat, very, very tight. So, I had to use a pair of pliers in the end to get that on. So, that was very tight indeed. So, uh, we've got that step done now. So, now we need to do is add this, put this metal bracket in here. So, we now need to screw this unit onto this metal bracket. Now you can see that it goes only goes one way because you've got this this leg here is, uh, is pointing out there and we need to use our famous thread lock again. So get some thread lock. Hopefully it's not dried up. A piece of rag that I've been using to wipe. There we go, not dried up at all, lovely. So we'll probably get three gallons when we only want a drop. <clears throat> so we're going to use those two little screws MB4. 
So I'm going to take an MB4 screw, put it on the screwdriver, put a drop of thread lock on it like so. Then that's going to go up string on there, look at it. Horrible stuff. <laughs> that's going to go up through there like so and then this gearbox is going to fit that way round. Wire out the way. There we go, there's that one in. And what I'll do is just nip that one up to hold everything in line. And then I'll take the other one. Drop a thread lock on there. And into there. That's those done. So that's that fitted to there. Okay, so that's that on there. And then we need this MW1 turret ring, which is in this bag here. There's a turret ring and there's no nothing to clean up on there at all. That's all fine. So this is going to go. So you can see we've got, if you look in the instructions, there's a cutout there, not on that side. So we've got the cutout here. So that's going to go that way round and then that's going to go that way round and sit on top of there. Like so. And for some reason we don't need thread lock here. screw's going to go in there. Sorry guys I had to stop there. Um, bit of a happy moment. My um, Pontos detail set for the Trumpeter HMS hood just arrived. Now I bought that on March the 31st <laughs> and it's just arrived. I bought it from BNA Model World in, um, in Australia and uh, yeah it was sat on April the 24th it was still sat in customs or still sat in Australia not dispatched so I got onto BNA Model World and they came back and they sent me a link of um, what Australia Post had done and basically from from April the 3rd which just happens to be the, the date that my my parcel arrived at the airport they ceased sending any economy mail abroad so <laughs> until further notice and obviously till in further notice was was the beginning of May so um but the good thing is it came through customs so I haven't had any fees to pay which is good so uh, that would have been a right kick in the nuts wouldn't it having to pay a fee as well so right so that's that done so we've got all that screwed together that's uh, that's that's that like that um, and then what it's telling us to do now is screw this into the bottom of the the turret now I'd like to see actually where is my turret ring I'd like to see if we could get all this together like so okay and then get this in afterwards because I would like to so it goes that way round yeah it goes that way round I would like to be able to put this in after I've done all the work on the turret so that going out the nope it looks like you can't actually get it in so we're going to have to build the turret up. Yeah, it won't go in like that. We're going to have to build the turret up, do the filler work and everything uh, on this seam with all this in there. So we'll just have to seal it up, I guess. Although you can, it will go in with a bit of persuasion. But then when it's glued up, it probably won't. So I'm going to have to fit that on there, which is something I don't want to do, but never mind. So this is going to go on. Oh, it's not telling us to put the wires down through there. The wires have got to be outside and it's telling us to put it on that way. 
So we've got the motor facing the bulge as you can see there and we're going to fit it in with two screws MB5 which are little countersunk screws so there's one there and pick up the rest of the the rest of the stuff with it so that's going like that and that screws going in there just like so and we've got another MB5 There we go. I'm really glad that um, that hood detail set finally arrived. I thought it was lost forever. There we go. So that's that step done. Now the next thing we need to do is go and look at this. So I think we'll get this done as well and then we'll call it a day. Okay so I've got the parts off now. So we've got our MY5 there, a little bracket. I've got the screw there. A the little ball there and so you get three of those although you only need one so you have some for the spares and then we've got these two parts here a19 and a21 and then we've got this one here a11 oh, i also need that um rod which is mk5 so that's that'll be in the machine gun bag if you remember so that one's there and you look at that rod that threaded rod so first things first we'll get our knife and we'll trim up these um, these sprue attachment points like so. And in the meantime, guys, if any of you can help with the uh, reference, if the whole you know that the the um, hot rolled steel plating or is it cast or whatever, I'd be grateful because I want to. Um, Put as much work into that whole top as I can because it will uh, really enhance the look of the model. And then with a nice bit of paint and some washes and filters and stuff it should make it all uh, pop. Be nice. There we go. So that's that all sanded away. Right. So the first thing we need is this one. This is A21 and we can see here we're going to add this bracket with the screw. Now this screw isn't magnetic so be careful just screw that in there again put the screw down as soon as it stops a little tiny tweak and that's it don't go ripping any threads out of anything so then that is going to go in so it's going that way we can see we've got a chamfer on one side here that's down so that's going to go in that way and that one's going to go in that way and what they're doing is telling us to sellotape those in okay <laughs> so they're going to face inside the turret so what we need is a couple of bits of tape I'm going to use some I'm going to use some Tamiya tape rather than sellotape let's get those taped in like that with a little bit of Tamiya tape here this is one of the problems I find with the Tamiya tape is uh, peeling it off it's always a problem Just going to cut that tape off there. Didn't do anything. Cut it off there. There we go. So that's that held in place. So that's that done. And now this shaft here, piece of tiny tape of finger, is going to screw onto there. Whoopsie daisy. And leave a 12 mil, a 12 mil length there. Get our 
row. Now that's about 14. There we go, that's 12 mil. And it needs to be like that with the hook facing up and the ball joint facing down. Just double check again. Yeah, 12 mil. Yeah. And there we go. You can see size for size again. Tammy I normally do that on instructions. So that's good. So there we go. I think we'll leave it there, guys. Um, I don't want to go in and add all this into the turret yet because I'm going to be doing some work on this to enhance the cast texture. Um, in fact, actually I could add this because it just glues in. So I think what I'll do so that's going to go like that, that's going to go in there like that and then we're going to add this into here like so. And that could just fall out. So I think we'll put that in there. In fact, you don't need to add any of this in here. You can just, you could just glue that part in. So what we can do is just take these off. Oh dear. We can just take these off and, and put them in later. Um, after we've done the work on the, on the turret. So I get that tape off of there. So yeah, we can just glue this in now. And that fits in there beautifully. Like so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come on the sand and stick and make sure this face is flat. Super duper glue. Get plenty of it in there. Make sure it's nice and solid. And then I think we'll get some clamps on there. Hold it in place. And there we go, that's all glued in. Nice and solid. I think I've got another couple of pegs on there. And there we are. So there we go. So if you're building this kit, you don't need to do any of this um, just glue that into the turret but then don't forget to put all that in obviously before you you put this in because that's going to glue into uh, into there so um there we go guys now in the next step i think we'll be doing some work on the on getting the um textured finish on the turret the, the cast finish because it's as you can see it's really smooth and i also need to cut this off because we're going to add our clear one on there aren't we so the next part should be quite interesting bit of surgery which you know uh, I love and I know that you guys like to see so that's been part 24 thanks for watching um, sorry it hasn't been a very very interesting one but I just needed to get something out uh, I'm in the middle of doing work on um, on the Mustang at the moment I've, I've ordered parts for the Land Rover but they haven't appeared obviously because of the pandemic and stuff so basically um, I'm getting some work done on the Mustang, which I will probably put in my Land Rover channel, just because I think people will be interested to see it. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe, and um, I'll be back with you soon with some more interesting stuff. Bye for now.